Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. From Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Lon McAllister in The Tamarack Tree on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we dramatize a story by Howard Breslin called The Tamarack Tree, a story which rather delightfully weaves fiction against a historical background, that background being the early days of our country when a great name and a great voice were heard throughout the land. That name and that voice were Daniel Webster's. Today, when so many of us who are not orators can address millions of people at a time, it is hard to realize that Webster's voice could only have reached thousands, but his fame and his place in history were well secured. To play the part of our young hero tonight, the man who met and talked to Daniel Webster in our story, we are lucky to have that fine young actor, Lon McAllister. And now, here is Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you're looking for a way to say something to someone you care for, look for a Hallmark card and you'll find the right words. Because Hallmark cards are designed to say what you want to say, the way you want to say it, and in the good taste you demand of anything that bears your personal signature. That's why Hallmark on the back of a greeting card has come to mean you cared enough to send the very best. And now Hallmark Playhouse presents Howard Breslin's The Tamarack Tree, starring Lon McAllister. <laughs> with the massive head and the bulging brows gazes through the window at the rooftops of Boston. Behind him, a smaller man hunches over a table strewn with maps and papers. He glances at the brooding figure of the famous senator from Massachusetts, Daniel Webster. Just one speech, Senator, one speech in Vermont. One speech and then one more and one more. I will support the weak candidate, but I am not getting all over the country for him. President Van Buren has plenty of men talking for him, Senator. The only way we can defeat him and elect General Harrison is... I know, I know, is with Dan Webster's eloquence. Everybody tells me that. If I am so necessary, why is the party's slogan Tippecanoe and Tyler too? Why not Tippecanoe and Webster? <coughs> One speech, Senator, and Vermont is certain. In which town? We uh, couldn't decide that, so this is what we did. We took this map and drew lines running from the big towns. They all cross at one spot. It's not a convenient location, but... That is where I am to speak. Yes, on a mountaintop. A mountaintop? There's a little settlement there called Stratton. They're expecting you on July 7th. Very well, Judge, July 7th it is. Hmm. Who ever heard of a political convention on a mountaintop? Who ever heard of Stratton? And for that matter, who in Stratton ever heard of Daniel Webster who will care if our paths cross or not? <laughs> Say, Dan? I said. Uh, oh, I said. Uh, there's 
going to be maybe nine, ten thousand folks up here on this mountain. And all of them fighting to stay at my inn and pay me good hard money. Wig money. It ain't good and it ain't hard. <laughs> you mean it ain't plentiful? And why? Because of you Democrats and Van Buren. We ain't forgot the panic and who closed the banks. Can't hear a word. Don't want to. <laughs> oh, morning, Charles. Morning, Mr. Bailey. Uh, Mr. Reed, you got time to put a new shoe on my horse? Whitefoot threw an iron coming in from the farm. Whitefoot, eh? What are you doing with your pa's best horse? Yeah, and your pa's Sunday wagon. Uh, well, he let me borrow him. Mm-hmm. Wearing your best meeting clothes, too. <laughs> Guess we know what this fella's up to. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you taking her to hear Daniel Webster talk? Taking who? Who? Never heard tell of Reverend Chester's daughter, I suppose. Name of Lavina. Uh, Mr. Reed, it'll only take you a minute. Uh, maybe Lavina don't care as much about Daniel Webster tomorrow as about the big outdoor dance tonight. Uh, Mr. Reed. All right. Unhitch your horse and lead her into the barn. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Abner. Oh, listen. Hey, uh, Charles, what's going on out there? There's a brass band. It's marching straight up the mountain, and there's a pack of people carrying signs. Why, the convention's coming, Abner. It's here. Hey, uh, tip a canoe and Tyler, too. And trouble, too. You wait and see, Dan. 10,000 people ain't crowded in onto Stratton Mountain without there be trouble aplenty. Hey, uh, for all of us. Charles? Hmm? What are you thinking about? Oh, nothing much, Lavina. Just watching all those campfires down at the clearing. Must be two, maybe 3,000 people here already. Does it matter? Well, sure it does. Well, they say there'll be 10,000 by the time Mr. Webster speaks tomorrow. Well, nothing like this has ever happened to Stratton. Maybe never will again. We're part of history, don't you see? You and I, Charles? Uh-huh. Someday we'll be telling our children. Uh, I mean, well, you you know. Charles. Yeah? The dance is just starting. Couldn't we stop here a minute? Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. Now what are you thinking about? Oh, Lavina, have I got to be thinking every second? Well, most people do. I do. Well, I... I was thinking about this old tamarack tree. Funny, it's the only tree left in the clearing here. Nobody's thought to cut it down. It, it just stands here like... Mm -hmm. Like it was watching over us. Uh, Vina. Yes? You're... You're awful pretty. Oh, Charles. Oh, Vina. Oh. oh, my dearest. You know, I thought you never would kiss me. Well, uh, I've wanted to, Vina, for years and years. I've, I've always loved you. And I you. Oh. oh, Charles, let's turn back and tell Father. Why? Well, I want him to be the first to know. He, he'll marry us himself. Well, Lavina, we can't. What? We can't get married. Not yet. Charles. Pa needs me on the farm, and besides, I haven't got any money. Well, well, we could go away. You could get work. If I could find it. Times are hard, Lavina. That's why they're holding this convention here, to change things. M maybe with a new president. Oh, you don't want to marry me. Lavina. You don't have to take me to the dance, Charles. I can walk the rest of the way. Lavina, wait. If we could get married next year. Not next year or any year. Good night, Charles. <laughs> Bailey, soon as I find a partner. Well, what's the matter with your own girl? Well, there's Levine over there just a standing around. I've already asked her to dance. Oh, one of them lovers, Tiffs, huh? Look, son, why does a woman fight with a man? Because it's so much fun making up again. 
You think Lavina would? Well, don't ask me. Ask her. She's looking at me right now. All right, I will. I beg your pardon, sir. Hmm? Oh, you're talking to me? I'm a stranger to the customs and courtesies of your region, sir. Must I be introduced to a lady before I ask her to dance? Well, it, it's hard to say. It all depends, I guess. Particularly on the girl, sir. Some of us prefer good manners. Well, Lavina, I, I was just coming over to ask... Uh, excuse me, sir. Thomas Jefferson Dunbar of Virginia, at your service, Miss. My name's Lavina Chester. My compliments to your parents, Miss Lavina, for providing us with such loveliness. Would you do me the honor? Lavina, please. Mr. Dunbar, I'd love to. We're just in time for the quadrille. All right. All right, Lavina. I tried. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Hey, Aunt Charles. I've got to talk to you. Let's go someplace quiet. Paul's down by the tamarack tree. Fine. Mr. Bailey, you've been out to the Illinois country, haven't you? Hey, Aunt, two years ago. Visited my brother there. What's it like? Good farming land? Oh, better than Vermont. But it's the wilderness itself. Well, a man wouldn't need much money to homestead a place, would he? No, just a strong back and a parcel of patience. Hey, hold on, boy. You aiming to take Lovina clear out into that... No. No, I'm... I'm going alone. When? As soon as this convention's over. As soon as I tell Pa so he can hire an extra man for the farm. I see. But, uh, if things don't work out in Illinois... Now well, there'll be someplace else. I'm leaving Stratton and Stratton Mountain for good. Oh, now, don't be hasty, boy. Everybody's all nerves with this here convention. Yes. Why'd they have to come here to Stratton? I wish I'd never heard of the convention or Daniel Webster. Anything he's come here to tell us, I wouldn't believe, no matter what. Those are pretty hard words, son. What? Oh, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. I was just leaning against this tree. Only quiet spot where a man can think. And he's got to think before he can talk. Charles. Don't he look like... Hey, yeah? It is. It's him. All I want to say is this, my boy. Whether it's for the votes of a nation or for the heart of a woman, sometimes you have to fight when there's hardly a chance of winning. But the man who runs from a fight doesn't lose that fight because he wasn't even in it. Now, uh, does that give you any ideas? Yes, sir. I, I think it does. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Just a moment, we will return to the second act of The Tamarack Tree, starring Lon McAllister. Would you like a social secretary to remind you of all your engagements next year? Tell you when to buy your wife's anniversary present? When is Junior's birthday? When you have an important engagement? Well, stop in tomorrow at the store where you buy Hallmark cards, because this fine store has a New Year's gift for you. It's a gift that's designed to make your whole year a friendly and happy one. It's that dependable, indispensable guidebook to friendship, the Hallmark Date Book for 1952. In it, you'll find room for the names and addresses of all your friends, space for your Christmas card list, and that's something you'll probably want to start now while this year's cards are fresh in mind. Plus room to make notes beside every day of the month to remind yourself of those dates and those friends you'll want to remember. Yes, the Hallmark date book is certainly a handy social secretary, plus being a convenient size so you can carry it in your pocketbook. And it's yours for the asking. A gift from the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards. It's worth a special trip. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of The Tamarack Tree, starring Lon McAllister. <laughs> Through the July night on Stratton Mountain, the dancing and celebration continues. 
The farmers of Vermont and loyal Whigs from as far away as Virginia have gathered to cheer the man they call Black Dan, the Thunderer, the defender of the Constitution. Daniel Webster is really more important at the moment than the candidate he is to speak for. Day comes, and in the forest clearing, the patient thousands still wait. Somewhere among them is Charles, a very unhappy young man. And somewhere, too, is Lavina, a very confused young lady. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, the Democrats will have to go some to match this crowd. Van Buren's as good as defeated. <laughs> yes, sir, Van, Van, the used up man. <laughs> hey, uh, my woman's like to have killed herself making pies and cakes for this mob. <laughs> Gotta give the women folks credit. They're doing their piece for old Tippecanoe and Tyler, too. Say, hey, don't forget. There'll be trouble. Never seen so many patent medicine men and gamblers and pickpockets. All good wigs and all up to no good. Oh, John. Oh, hey, boy. Oh, Mr. Bailey. Uh, I think... I thought maybe I'd like to know Lavina's looking for you. Lavina? She told me? Where, where, where is uh, she? Just follow along with me, son. Uh, she said she'd be down to the other side of the speaker's stand. What was that? Oh, just a shooting match. That young Virginia fella and Putt Taylor holding the competition. Lavina is watching. Hey, me! Hunt me! Lavina! Lavina! Oh, how are you, Charles? Fine. And you? Oh, all right. I hear that you're going out west. Yes. Some people might think you were running away from something. Or somebody. L Lavina, maybe if... If we could go back, as if the other night didn't happen. Please, Charles, if you don't mind, I'd like to watch the shooting. One, two! Split <laughs> <laughs> the playing card right in half. Oh, wonderful, Tom, a beautiful shot. Howdy, Charles. Ain't that Dunbar fellow shooter? Blew the card to pieces at 20 yards. He's all right, I suppose. All right. Hot Tate was the best shot on the mountain till this Virginia boy come along. Well, he could have been just lucky. Really, Charles? You don't think he can do it again? Oh, Tom! Tom! Yes, Miss Lovina? Here's a man who'd like to try a match with you. Lovina, I never said anything. Delighted to accept, sir. If you will choose a pistol for my case, eh? No, thanks. Oh? You prefer your own gun? I assure you, sir, this is one of the finest pairs of dueling pistols in Virginia. Either one you choose I'm is not shooting. Oh? <laughs> Miss Lovina said... I'm a Vermont farmer, Mr. Dunbar. I'm not a southern gentleman educated in the art of dueling and killing human beings. Sir, I must ask you to watch your words. Then keep your advice to yourself. Come on, it's starting. Daniel Webster's speed. Hey, it seems we're to be interrupted, sir. If you wish to carry the argument further, you'll find me at the inn this evening. <laughs> that is, if I'm not detained by a young lady. <laughs> tell you, best speech a mortal ever heard. Two hours long and it seems like two minutes. <laughs> That's Daniel Webster for you. Charles, what's wrong, boy? Ain't hardly touched your plate. I'm not hungry. Eh? Hey, who's hungry? Melly, fetch another pot. Can't run it in without feeding the customer. No, not for me, Mr. Bailey. I've, I've got to get back to the farm. What? But the evening ain't half started. We're going to have another dance and a victory celebration. I know, but Pa's expecting me at home. Our toast, gentlemen. A toast to the hospitality of Vermont manhood and to the women they love. Who said that? Dunbar. I just came in. Gentlemen, a salute to your wives and sweethearts and to the girl who will soon be Mrs. Thomas Dunbar. Mr. Dunbar, get on your feet. Not for you, sir. No fighting. I ain't a respectable place. Then what's this fellow doing here? It requires satisfaction, sir. Any time, any place, any way you want it. Very well. Since I'm challenged, the choice of weapons is mine. Pistols. No. Not the way he can shoot. It's murder. Hey, uh, and it's plain foolishness. Nobody's going to prove anything by it. We all know that, gentlemen. Except Mr. Dunbar. But it can't be helped. 
Mr. Bailey, Abner, will, will you meet us at dawn? Uh, yeah. Where? In the clearing, by the tamarack tree. Daniel Webster and his wigs. I told you his plaguey convention would bring trouble. <laughs> Sun's coming up now, gentlemen, but uh, <clears throat> it uh, it ain't too late for apologies. Yeah. Hey, uh, how about it, gentlemen, Mister Dunbar? I leave that up to my opponent, sir. Charles. Charles. Sometimes you have to fight when there's hardly a chance of winning. But the man who runs from a fight didn't lose that fight. Because he wasn't even in it. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm ready, Mr. Bailey. Let's get it over with. All right, gentlemen, stand back to back. Now, on my count, you'll each take 15 paces. Turn, fire at will. Are you ready? I am. Yes, sir. Charles, have you ever handled a pistol before? Once or twice. Oh, that ain't going to be good enough. And why you had to pick this spot under the tamarack tree? Why, the light's too uncertain. Dan, stand clear there. Oh, God save you, son. One. Two. Three. Four. Why did I pick this spot? You'll know, Lavina. You'll know why. Charles, what are you thinking about? Oh, this old tamarack tree. It's funny. It's the only tree left in the clearing here. It just stands here like... Like it was watching over us. Vina. Oh, Vina. Oh, my dearest. I thought you never would kiss me. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. See how you were. He uh, acted mighty sorry about it all. He stopped by. Hey, huh? Uh, Mr. Bailey, this isn't Pa's place. This isn't my room. No. Then your place? The inn. Uh, no. Uh, maybe you'll figure it out from your nurse here. I fixed some soup for you, Charles. The doctor wants you to eat. Lavina, this is your home. Yes, we brought you here. Uh, Mr. Bailey, can you help raise him up? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, oh, there. Thank you. Oh, and Father would like to see you in the parlor. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he would, Lavina. I'm sure he would. Lavina? Yes? Uh, pa will move me out to the farm so I won't be in your way. Oh, you're not in the way, Charles. Well, it... It isn't right for me to stay here when, when you and Dunbar... Charles. Charles, I want you to know that I understand about the fight in the duel. You thought Tom was talking about me at the inn. He was. He'd just come from seeing you. He as much as announced your engagement. He was toasting his fiancée, yes, Charles, but, but she's a girl down south. You see, he told me about her. He, he thought he wanted to marry me instead. I convinced him he was right in his first choice. Oh, Vina. Oh, Vina. Oh, my darling. I... I wanted to run away from you, but I couldn't. And when I stood there under the tamarack tree, 
I knew nothing could tear you out of my heart. Not even Dunbar's bullet. The tamarack tree. It was watching over us, dearest. Look, we can see it from here. Yes. Standing alone in the clearing. Yesterday, 10,000 people passed under its branches. Now they're gone. And Daniel Webster spoke in the shadow of it. To 10,000 people. And to me. Someday he may forget he ever came to Stratton Mountain. But we'll remember Lavina. You and I. We'll have reason to remember. For as long as we both shall live. Alistair and James Hilton will return in a moment. I learned a surprising fact the other day. A cousin, whom I've always considered the most thoughtful person I know, told me she has a very poor memory. Well, her secret is she doesn't trust it. She jots down everything she wants to remember in her Hallmark date book. Birthdays and anniversaries, names of new friends, ages of all her nieces and nephews, so she'll send them the right presents. No wonder she's so popular. Now, I'm sure that's just an example of the way many women use their Hallmark date books to make themselves more thoughtful people, more valued friends. The Hallmark date book reminds you of everything you want to remember all year long. There's space for notations beside each day. Yet it's so cleverly arranged, it's small enough to slip into your handbag. You can carry it everywhere. The Hallmark date book is a gift to you from the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards. A useful little present that's yours for the asking. Just stop in tomorrow and ask for yours. Here again is James Hilton. Lon, that was an excellent performance. Thank you. For a man who was born and raised in Los Angeles, you seem perfectly at home in Vermont. Ever been there? Well, yes, I have, Mr. Hilton. I, I played in summer stock there a year ago last summer. And I met a lot of wonderful people, too. Incidentally, you know, I have a friend there who reminds me of that cousin Frank Goss was telling us about. I'll bet she uses your Hallmark date book every day, too. She's always doing something very nice for her friends. I believe a great many people do use the Hallmark date book, Lon. They find it's a real aid to friendship. Well, I know your cards certainly are. Who's going to be with you on the Hallmark Playhouse next week, Mr. Hilton? Next week, we shall present a delightful story of a fine old American character, The Horse and Buggy Doctor, written by Dr. Arthur B. Hertzler. And to play the title role, we are happy to welcome back Lionel Barrymore. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our producer-director is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose. And our story tonight was adapted by Leonard St. Clair. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you carry it up to send the very best. The role of the Vena tonight is played by Barbara Eiler. Others in our cast were Lamont Johnson, Ted Osborne, Joseph Kearns, Tom Tully, and Ted DeCorsia. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Hallmark cards extend a cordial invitation to see the new Hallmark television program with Sarah Churchill every Sunday beginning January 6th. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at this same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Lionel Barrymore in Dr. Arthur E. Hertzler's Horse and Buggy Doctor and the week following Susan Ertz's Madame Claire starring Agnes Moorhead on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.